I'm sure you can see me now, right? I think it's working. Yes. Okay. So, all right. I think it's working now. Yeah, it is. All right. To God be the glory. We're up. We're up and running. Praise the Lord. So, this morning I want to wish all those who are mothers, mothers to be, uh, mother, stepmothers, mother in laws, the whole nine yards. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, great grandmothers. Yeah, um, uh, uh, adopted mothers, adoptive mothers, all of it. As long as you're, you're a mother, you could be an auntie, you could be a sibling being a mother. I'm wishing you happy Mother's Day. All right, so this morning's message is entitled Do Overs. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever needed a do over, but the opportunity passed you by, you know, or time was just up? Uh, like <laughs> bishop says many times over you know sometimes you're taking an exam you're having a mathematical equation that listen the bulk of the points is on that equation and guess what you don't have it till the bell rings and you're like wait i got it i need more time and all you hear is put the pens down close the books that's it no more chance, right? How about you see a stranger and you're attracted to them? You're on a bus, plane, train, automobile, whatever you're in. You're trying to work up your nerve. Sometimes it's a passing train and you want to yell out, hey, what's your name and number? And the opportunity is gone. Huh? You need a do-over. These are some do-overs, right? Job interview. Have you ever been on a job interview? You, you, you were prepared. You, you knew the questions, you knew the answers. You basically flopped in the interview. The moment you get up to walk out, all the brilliant ideas and suggestions and questions flood your minds again and answers, right? Anyone saying do over please? Well, how about mothers? Have you ever needed a do-over or a makeover? Chance to raise your children to know God? Chance to have had better means to better care for your children? A chance to reconcile with your estranged child or children? Chance to spend more time with your child or children? A chance to, be show, to show more love to your child or children? A chance to better take care of yourself instead of beating yourself up for what you didn't know. Instead of worrying yourself into sickness. Instead of stressing yourself and your children and driving a wedge. Anyone saying a do-over or a makeover, please. Well, we can get, this, this morning's message is going to be very short. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> we can get a makeover from God. We can get do-overs from God. We know the Bible says, the portion of scripture I'm getting ready to read, the Bible tells us that we're blessed reading the word of God, blessed hearing the word of God being read. Huh? And we know when we apply the word of God to our lives, we will have good success. When we meditate on God's word, you know when you meditate on something, let me ask you something. You ever had a piece of sugar cane in your mouth and you just chewed and chewed and then you chewed and chewed and chewed some more. And when you're done, some people eat mangoes like that too. I think Bishop's wife, Claudette, Apostle Ingrid. There's some folks in my life that I know and others know, right? That will eat mangoes until that mango is totally dry. You could literally plant the seed. Right, Michelle? <laughs> Carl, Carl and his wife, Michelle. Yeah, there are folks that, well, when we, we need to meditate on God's word, just the same way. 
until we juice it, we milk it of all that we can get at that time, right? Do we do that? We hear the word of God and we, we hear and we run and we go, that was a good word. What was the word? I don't remember. Mm -mm, I don't even know. You ever get up and read your Bible and, yes, I read the word and I felt so good. But were you transformed if you can't remember even what the verse said? And I'm not accusing anybody because, listen, I've been there, read it, go. What I read again? I should have written it down, Lord. <laughs> till I was taught differently. Holy Spirit teaches us, sit, take your time. And even if you have to go, mull it over. Chew, like you're chewing that piece of sugar cane. Like you're just enjoying that mango till it's dry. Huh? Or whatever it is. Right? Some people is bones, right? They chew on the bones so there's no more bone left. That's what we need to do to the Word of God. Well, this morning's message is, I'm taking it from Ephesians. Good morning, Danette. Oh, Danette, say do-over, please. <laughs> yes, he will give us the makeovers and the do-overs, God. Good morning, Eja, and happy Mother's Day to you, my sister, my daughter. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, Ephesians, I'm going to read 5, 1 through 14 in one version, and 15 through 20 in another version, and you'll know why. You'll know why when you hear so we begin, and it begins by you know, imitate God. Hmm? Therefore, in everything you do, if you want to do over, listen to, just, just go read these scriptures after, okay? Imitate God, in, therefore, in everything you do. What do we do? We eat, we sleep, we drink, we walk, we talk, we laugh. Everything imitate God. God even tells husband and wives how to love each other. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Wives, respect your husbands. Then go to the book of Solomon and see that love story and love on your spouses. All right, all right, let me move on. The babies are already here. Okay, so let me just move on. <laughs> imitate God in everything you do. Because you are his dear children. Whose children are we? Uh, God's. Uh, we belong to God. Hallelujah. He is our heavenly above. Thank you, Jesus. Live a life filled with love. So what are we doing? We're imitating God. We're living a life filled with love. Do you know, I, I say this all the time, I can't stop saying this, because it's proven. I tell you, we had to cut all the plants. Seriously, we had to not trim, but just cut. There are now new babies growing. There are <laughs> others that we gave away, you know. When I tell you, because we've loved on our plants, they thrive, grew, grew out the window, grew up the side, grew. Bishop, what I tell you, couldn't stop growing. Had to cut them down. Just simply had to cut them um, and share the love. So we shared the love with some folks, right? Egypt could tell you, let me tell you, and her plant is like growing, right? It's growing too. When we love, when we are loved, we thrive. We don't survive. We thrive. When we know love, no matter what we've been through in life, we start thriving, sons and daughters of God. Be it plant, pet, person, it doesn't matter. It will thrive. The earth will thrive. Hallelujah. Knowing it's loved by the children of God, when we show enough love and the love start bouncing off of us, guess what? The earth will stop trying to spit each and every one of us out. Because the Bible tells us, because of our, our sins, collectively, the earth rebels. Does it not, Bishop? It does. It's in the word of God. Yes, yeah, Bishop says so. But we can get a do-over. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says new heaven and earth will be formed. Uh, that's a new do-over that Jesus himself will do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So the thing is, 
Hallelujah. Continue reading the word of God. Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ. Who example are we following? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma to God. Everything we benefit from God right now, we're benefiting before because of Jesus. We're just riding on Jesus' coattail. Truth be told, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Repetition, sons and daughters of God, is for intensification, so it sticks in our minds. Hallelujah. As a pleasing aroma to God. Continue reading now. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. You know, many times we don't understand we're the one who caused the filth to build up on ourselves when we participate in things that the Bible tells us let there not be. Huh? Anyway, such sins, the Bible says, have no place among God's people. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. These are not for you. Do you know sometimes some people may, you ever heard that the internet is filled with funny people, right? There are funny jokes that we can laugh at and there are funny jokes that we need to shun. Uh, like, yeah, no, mm -mm, not today. Not at the expense of God. Hmm? And when I say not at the expense of God, I mean at our expense, really. So when someone makes a derogatory joke using God, Christ Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, it, that ought not to entertain us. Also, crude languages, curse words. Huh? It's right here. Telling lies, obscene stories. You know, you ever heard some stories and you go, well, my Lord, whatever made you think of that? Or even think of uttering it. Mm? Sometimes the things that are, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs. Even a fool is deemed to be wise when he keeps his mouth shut. All right. There are so many messages today. Holy Spirit help me. Oh Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord. So it says continue reading. Instead let there be thankfulness to God. So what are we supposed to do? Imitate God, huh? Follow the example of Jesus, right? And what? Be thankful to God. Well, I know if we spent our time t thanking God, we wouldn't have time for the negative speeches, for the curses, for the anger, for the jealousy and envy and all of that. We wouldn't have time for that if we spend time being thankful to God. Because guess what? We would be thanking God for the things that he's doing for us that we don't know. For the things he did for us that we didn't know. Right? The things he spared us from that we, we, we weren't even aware of. Uh, the battles that went on while we slept. Yet God, and because of Jesus, here we are saying, good morning, Jesus. Uh, thank you for waking us up. With your touch, Lord, we love you so much. We're going to share your love in all we say and do. For our day begins and ends with who? You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about do-overs, by the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Says the word of God. Continue reading. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who what disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. Jamaicans have a saying, don't be follow fashion. Right, Bishop? Man. I just heard that in my head. It's been such a long time. <laughs> oh my God. It just came like, boop. I don't, yeah. Yeah, don't be follow fashion. 
See, Bishop said he, it's a while. He has a long time. He hasn't heard that. It's been years, literally. Yeah. Well, it came from the Bible first. <laughs> Don't participate. Don't go doing what they're doing. Don't follow after them. For once you were full of darkness, right? All of us can say we were full of darkness. Our eyes were blinded. We did not know the truth of God. But once the light shines, uh, the light of Christ, we know that we have light. So the Bible continues reading. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from God, from the Lord. So live as people of light. How are we supposed to live? As people of light. You, you're hearing the do-overs, right? Start imitating God. Uh, start following the example of Christ. Start living in the love of God. Uh, come on, we're, 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 we're getting. Hallelujah, glory to God. And start living in the light of God. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. You know how you carefully, some of us are people pleasers. Some of us were people pleasers. Hallelujah. Thank you for being delivered from that. But for those who are or were, those who still are, what do you do? You will jump over hoops to please people. Well, how about we do the same for God? Huh? We must carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And aren't we, I don't know about you, but I am grateful that God is not like man. Because there's some folks you could jump through the hoop, you could lay down your life for them and they would go, is that all? Huh? Some folks you do so much and they go, oh, is that all? Where's the more? And they will bleed you dry. They would suck every ounce of blood out of you. And then go, yeah, mm, that person did nothing for me. Say what now? It doesn't pay to please people, sons and daughters of God. But the Bible says we need to carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Because when we please the Lord, we find favor. When we please the Lord, we are blessed. When we please the Lord, we are empowered. When we please the Lord, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of God. And we are the church. When we please the Lord, we are planted in the courts of God. And we remain green and virile in our old age. When we please the Lord, we get do-overs hallelujah glory to god <laughs> yeah girl me you both but praise god i learned what it is to please god thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord don't participate uh sorry for the anger of god will fall on those yeah and we did that already carefully after we carefully determine what pleases the Lord, the Bible says, take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and the darkness. Instead, expose them. And you may be saying, lady, it's Mother's Day. I don't want to hear all this. You better want to hear this because mommy, the moment you start doing these things, oh, you're going to see some beautiful children. You're, go you're going to say, Lord, Lord, what a blessing you gave me. You truly blessed the fruit of my womb. Amen. Praise God. So as the word of God says, we should expose the deeds of darkness. You know, when we see our adult children, for those with adult children, doing things that are wrong, we need to tell them that it is wrong in love. And give them the verse in scripture. Just ask Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Okay. They can read. They're old enough. You sent them to school. You labored over them. You clothed them and fed them and pampered. And some people even make their children become so entitled that they feel that they should have the things they shouldn't have. And then they get into trouble. And, you know, they bring tears. The Bible tells us about this. A very good book to read for mothers, the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Trust me. The number of times I gave my children a verse. They could tell you. They got the scripture. That was, the, that was it. They had to read it and write 
what God revealed to them. And it didn't matter how long it took them. You see, here's the kicker. The more they read it, the more it seeped into their spirit. And then transformation came. We are only transformed by the renewing of our mind when the word of God is what? Mm, when we read it. Praise God. All right. Just a lesson. Key there. So, continue reading the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't know this. <laughs> no, Bishop, I know, I, I know y'all are brilliant, you know, but I was like, you know, you can read a scripture. Oh, it's not that I never read it. That part just never leapt out at me. Oh, what? Don't even talk about what ungodly people are doing. And say, don't, don't, don't even just let Jesus handle that. Mm -hmm. Just let him handle that. But the Bible says, <laughs> but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. See, don't worry about it because Jesus is going to shine light. Mm. Praise the Lord. For the light makes everything visible. Huh? This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead and Christ will give you light. Yes. Oh, that was beautiful. And now I'm going to, oh, sorry, that was the New Living Translation. That was Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 14 in the New Living Translation. Now, I switch. I'm still in Ephesians 5, but now I'm reading verses 15 through 20 in the King James Version. Now, see them that ye walk circumspectly. You walk upright, you can only do so in Christ. Huh? Walk in integrity. Huh? Too many Christians are not walking in integrity today. Too many children of God are not walking in integrity. But you get a do-over. You get a do-over. You can start now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Catch this. Here's the do-over. What? Redeeming the time. My God. Did you know you can redeem the time? You can absolutely get that do-over. Remember, the moment time and opportunity escapes it, it's done, it's gone. You know what? 8 o'clock this morning will never be 8 o'clock this morning again, but it'll be 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's a different day, though. Catch that. But God says, you can redeem the time when we what walk in wisdom hallelujah glory to god there's the do-over and he says because the days are evil why do you think we need do-overs if not because the day is evil huh because the enemy of our soul throws so many things at us we say things with our mouth the bible says the power of life and that is in the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof in proverbs 17. and yet we, we keep saying stuff over and over saying negative things about our bodies saying negative things about our children our spouses saying negative things about our communities we say negative things about every single thing sometimes we say negative things about god without realizing that's what we're doing and then when we start reaping those fruit oh we're like can i get a do over jesus without even taking accountability for the role we played before we got to, to that. Because if we studied well enough, guess what? We would be able to take the exams, wouldn't we? If we did not procrastinate, huh? if we did not rush things, if, if we got to the interview on time, we would have time to relax and really go over the questions and the answers and the, huh? Well, maybe the passing the stranger on the street we you know, that's a different but you get where i'm going right you understand right bishop god be praised amen you understand my sisters good morning wendy how are you mothers i pray that you understand okay so the bible continue reading saying wherefore be not unwise 
but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How many of us know the will of the Lord? You know, one day I, I've heard so many people pray prayers, praying God's will. Did you know that God actually tells us in his word in several places what his will is? So you know what the will is. And the will has been enacted by Christ Jesus. I think before we pray many times, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to teach us how to pray. Just one. Uh, wasn't part of the message, but it is now. Uh, that just came. Hallelujah. And so the word of God continues reading. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit of God speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You see, so many times when problems and trials and tribulations and things happen in life, instead of talking to God, singing and consult, going to the word, we, we start to rehearse it. We talk to other people. We have an argument with our loved ones and, and, and we curse them out. Instead of when the situation arises, you say, you know what? Not right now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not this minute. Because I tell you what, when you curse each other out, you're going to end up crying. Going to God and begging God, can you please undo what you all did? Having a strifeful life, sons and daughters of God, is of the enemy of your souls. It's not of God. You can disagree. You can get angry. Word of God. But you don't have to sin. And when you are sinning, that's when the enemy comes in and wipe you up. Because he's like, they are serpents food and it's time for him to have a feast. Don't let him feast on you. Don't let him feast on your spouse, your children, grandchildren. Don't let him feast on anybody or anyone you know. Your loved ones, don't let him feast on them. And God shows us how. We get do-overs, glory to God. And so the word of God continues reading, saying, giving God thanks always for all things unto God. Hallelujah. And the Father in the name of Christ of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah glory to God you see God does give do-overs and he does so because of Christ Jesus hallelujah he gives us chances to redeem the time you know we logically you know and scientifically well maybe some scientists who study will tell you it is a possibility when you read the word of God because I say this all the time science proves that God is more real than anything else huh? and no matter how people try to disprove huh? God so the thing is God spiritually gives us do-overs by redeeming the time and allowing it to manifest physically. How many of us can testify this morning? I'm talking to mothers. You've been through some things, but here you are today, not looking like the things you've been through. Huh? You've struggled. You've been abused. You've been cursed out. You've been rejected. Oh, my Lord. You've been physically, spiritually, emotionally, sexually, financially abused tossed to the curb but Jesus gave a do-over because of Jesus God gave a do-over and today you lived in a shelter you were homeless today you have a home your children were estranged and God brought them home and even if that's not the case he can still do that for you you get that do-over God tells us the earth, this earth is so corrupt and filled with sin that in order for us to live on it, 
he has to create, you know, cleanse the earth and give us that new heaven and new earth, meaning not, not where he lives, not where he resides, but the heavens, the atmosphere has to be purified, has to be cleansed. We do get do-overs. So, mothers, give thanks. If you feel as if you're living a stressful life, if you think things aren't going the way they should, you have not enough finances to take care of your children, just sit and look. Look into last week. Did they, were they, did they eat, were you able to feed them? And they were satisfied? Did they go to school knowing they were loved? Sons and daughters of God, there is a chance for a do-over. Redeeming the time because of the evil days. You've been robbed of opportunity. Some mothers, because you got pregnant, you were a single mother, and got some may have gotten pregnant several, several times. You didn't get a chance to complete your, your education. Some folks got dropped out of high school even, struggling. But God, you have a second opportunity. You have other opportunities, you have do-overs, Allow God to redeem the time. Actually, you can redeem the time, but only in Christ Jesus. You get a do-over to miss, to, to gain the goodness that you missed. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now how, you may ask. How, you may ask. The Bible tells us, be as Jesus demonstrated to us. Be imitators of Christ Jesus. Huh? How? Like, how can I imitate Jesus? I didn't even know him. I don't know how he walks. I don't know how he talks. Because, you know, maybe the millennials are saying this. Even some of the older ones are saying this. I've never seen Jesus. I don't, I don't know anything about him. There are folks saying that. Who is he? Just say, Lord, I need to know who you are. Like, if you have not yet given your life to the Lord, if you don't know him, just let him know. You would like him to come into your life. Uh, just be honest with him uh, I say that because let me tell you honesty takes you a long way it delivers you frees you from darkness hallelujah glory to God so how do we become imitators of Christ right there in the word told us live in God's love what are we supposed to do? Live in God's love. And how do we do that? When we receive God's love from him, first we have to receive his love, right? Because on our own, we don't know how to love. People say things like they love each other to death and they literally kill each other. We're supposed to love each other into life because love is a life giver. The Bible said love is stronger than death. Go read Songs of Solomon. Huh? Bishop, is that not what it said? Y'all know. <laughs> Just none of a love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So live, love each other into life, sons and daughters of God. Because that's what Jesus did for us. He loved us into eternal life. And, and who he enhances our daily living. Oh, praise the Lord. And then once we receive that kind of love, once we acknowledge how loved we are and we start living it, Lord, I want to experience your love. If you've never experienced it, that's all you have to say. Some of us in here can attest to whoo, how sweet the love of God is. It's sweeter than sweet. Yeah, yes, it is. Okay. And so once we do that, then we can start sharing love with each other. Because there is so much hatred, so much cruelty, so much crudeness. But you know what? When the love of God permeates your being, you start to say, you know what, God? When somebody says something wrong to you or do, do something, you start saying, you know what, God? You handle that. And while you're at it, give them a chance to repent. Hmm? 
I'm telling you, you start praying a whole lot of different. You even start saying, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's a whole different prayer. You start praying, you know, because like the psalmist David, there are times some folks might want to, oh, kill them, Lord, do that. Bishop, isn't that true? Have, can I tell you? This is this is the gospel truth. Listen, well, it's the truth. Uh, it didn't come from the Bible. It was an experience. So I used to go to a Catholic church, right? And this one day, I went in uh, for prayer. You know, early morning prayer. You know, you go in. So I got there because before I went to work. And can I tell you, there was this man, and he's standing before a statue. Well, I never stood before the statues, but he, he stood before the statues. I don't know. I don't even remember which one it was, but he was, kill them! And he was just going on the toilet. <laughs> and so, all of us who were like, in, bowing our heads in silent prayer, could not pray. Cause, <laughs> well, we, we kind of had to just pray for him. You know what I mean? But, just took our minds off our own issues but I say that to say that that's how some folks pray but you have to remember when the earth rebels against sin and humanity it doesn't just single out like it would say you know what Basil Anderson is so very good I shall not bother his his certain section where he is no the earth simply says you know what with everybody around <laughs> that have just got on earth's last nerve earth said earth said lord elohim creator i want to spew them out i just want to spew them out this is why we need to pray for each other we must live in god's love this is how we i'm telling you the, it's, it's simple just these three little things and you'll redeem the time Next, live in God's light. Now, we know that the light of God, the Bible tells us what it does. It shines on the darkness and it exposes it and it repels the darkness. You see, the light of God does not cause pain. Huh? The light will, however, repel the darkness that causes pain. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's not the other way around. The Bible tells us that we must try the spirit. The enemy may disguise himself as a lie. But here's a clue, sons and daughters of God. If light, quote unquote, you know, the quote unquote light, comes around and brings you darkness and pain, it is not light. No matter how the light tries to pretend to be light. It cannot be because light dispels darkness it chases it away light relieves pain I'm just saying so know that and then what do we do live in God's wisdom I'm talking about redeeming the time you getting the do-over it's how you get the do-over now, wisdom, the Bible tells us, is principle. Get it? It's the principle, the number one, the numero uno virtue. Get wisdom, the Bible says. And while you're getting wisdom, get understanding to go with it. The Bible tells us that a wise man can build a city, but a fool will tear it down. Huh? Did the Bible not say that, Bishop? There you go. Bishop's telling you. It's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Listen, it's in the word. I'm not telling you anything that is not in the word. Because <laughs> in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and became flesh. Who knows that the word is Jesus? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, as I close, and I said I'm not staying too long this morning, mothers know that our identity is in Christ whose loving sacrifice gives us all access to do-overs and makeovers. 
it is only through him that we can function wisely and function successfully and raise wise and successful children and for those raising their grandchildren that's also a do-over train them up in Christ hallelujah glory to God you see the thing is Jesus is God's love for God loved us so much that he gave us love John tells us the book of John tells us he gave his one and only begotten son he gave us his love Jesus is God's love Jesus is also God's light he is the light that shines and repels the darkness he is the light that gives us light hallelujah you know how the Sun illuminates the moon so the moon reflects the light to earth Jesus is the primary light that gives us light and then who is wisdom in the book of Corinthians the Bible tells us Jesus himself is wisdom we cannot do it mothers without Christ there will be no do-overs no redeeming the time and I'm telling you he gives us he gives it to us sons and daughters of God some of us on here can attest to that he absolutely gives us those do-overs he absolutely allows us to redeem the time and we can only do so in Christ Jesus in the love of God who is Jesus in the light of God who is Jesus in the wisdom of God who is Jesus you see when we reside in him we redeem the time when we reside in him we do get do-overs when we reside in Jesus we get makeovers makeovers that some of us are unrecognizable from the stuff we've gone through hallelujah thank you Jesus when we turn our eyes upon Jesus instead of the mistakes that we've made and open our ears by being obedient to God then our hearts will understand that God will turn to us and heal us and give us our do-overs and our makeovers and allow us to redeem the time for additional reading please see Acts 28 verses 26 and 27 and Acts chapter 17 verse 28 hallelujah glory to God and I want to say again to all mothers I'm glad you're doing well Wendy I want to say to all mothers happy Mother's Day enjoy that God made you a mother because only a woman can bring that life right that's how God created us right so I want to say however yeah and, and also thanks to net and also Acts 17 and 28 Acts 17 verse 28 thank you I want to say to those mothers who are grieving to those mothers who have lost their children to illnesses accidents gun violence or just domestic violence whatever kind of violence know that the enemy of the souls of humans hates us and so he wants to see you grieve your way to death yourself remember the good and wonderful memories of your children some lost too early we just heard about a boy who was just shot in his head a 16 year old but God the thing is for those mothers who are estranged from their children and grandchildren you may not have access to them they're growing up they may not even know about you for those who are alone you're you're feeling lonely you live alone and you feel lonely because there's not too much interaction with others for you 
well, I want to say this today, mothers. God is right there with you. Right there. In your bedroom, your bathroom, your living room, your kitchen, in your car, on the road, on the bus, on the train, as you walk on the streets. He is right there with you. When you are crying those bitter, bitter, bitter tears, his arms are wrapped around you and he collects those tears. Rest in the comforting arms of El Shaddai. And there's a reason, because El Shaddai is the breasted one. El Shaddai is God of the mountain. The, the God who can remove the mountain of your pain. He is God, the destroyer of enemies. He can destroy the enemies, the things that beset you, the things that try to pull you into the depression. He is God, the self-sufficient one. Everything you need is in El Shaddai. God, the nurturer of babies. When you cry like a baby, he is right there cradling you and nurturing you. Hallelujah. Until you become strong again. He is God, the Almighty, all powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. In Him, in El Shaddai, the Breasted One, is your makeover, is your do over. He will, El Shaddai, as you live in Christ, being held by El Shaddai will absolutely help you to redeem the time. And as I said before, he is there for you. Live in God's love. Live in God's light. Live in God's wisdom. Live in Christ, who is the embodiment of all the love of God, the light of God, and the wisdom of God. So no matter what is happening, know that he blessed your womb with children. Take some time for yourself. Get that do-over. Get that makeover. Allow him to love on you. Whether you're receiving love of a million or love of none meaning the humans know that receive his love and enjoy mother's day have a blessed and a wonderful mother's day when it comes god bless everyone know that i love you and god the father god the son god the holy spirit loves all of us so so much more than we could ever imagine have a blessed and a wonderful day everyone thank you bishop LOR Radio, YouTube family, Facebook family. Thank you, guys. Blessings, everyone. Sister Emma Jean, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> All right, Bishop, take care. Mm -hmm. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Fisher and Danette and Wendy and Ija. Hey, Chrissy, happy Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to all.